Welcome to Calisthenics Kids. We're on lesson number 27. We're going to focus on our gorilla squat today, but and all you'll need for the movement challenge at the end is a book, or if you really back yourself, something more expensive. Right, let's get to it. So we're going to start with our frogger. So we're going to push the floor away, and we're going to end up with our chest showing at the front. So push the floor away, big chest at the front. If you can, get your elbows inside your knees, showing off your chest at the front. So pushing the floor away, elbows inside knees. Now, if you're finding that pretty easy, then what I want you to do is try and generate a little bit more height as you push through the floor. So if I'm feeling confident, I can push through the floor more and slowly come back down. As I land on the floor, it should be nice and quiet. So if you're making a big crash in your uh, bang, then think about pushing harder through the floor, almost like you are squishing a spider underneath your hands. And then let's try that sideways. So I'm here, I'm gonna put my hands down and then pop myself across. And the next thing we're gonna work on is seeing if we can change direction. So your finger's gonna point behind you you're gonna lean over slightly to that side and then pop yourself around. So fingers behind, I'm gonna shuffle back. Fingers behind, lean over to that side and then pop yourself around. Now let's see if we can combine those movements in different directions. So we've got forwards, sideways, and we've got um, spinning around in a circle. So let's see what directions we can combine. So this is up to you. Freestyle it how you want. We're just moving around in different directions and just playing with where we are in time and space. Now the next thing we're going to do is our bear. Now if you remember all the way back to lesson two, bum up as high as you can, chin on your chest. So bum up as high as you can, chin on your chest, and we're just going to walk forward opposite arm, opposite leg. Now, if you're finding that quite easy, then what I want you to challenge yourself to do is to use different parts of your hands or your feet to move. So you might use only your big toe. So for example, if I come side on and I'm only using my big toe to move, you might use a different part of your hand. Or if you want, you might even play around with which way your hand is moving in relation to your feet. So bum up nice and high, just have a play around with that, whichever way your body feels comfortable moving. Next thing we're gonna look at is the monkey. So it's very similar to the frogger, we're just gonna land one, two with the hands, three, four with the legs. So this is what it looks like, almost like I've got one hand on a car and I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. Let's show that again. So one, two, three, four. And we're just working our way diagonally forwards and diagonally backwards. So backwards is much harder. So if that's difficult, just turn yourself around and then come back the other way. So it's just landing one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. And then can we do that coming the other way? So one, two, three, four. Now we're gonna look to combine that with our duck walk. So quick recap on our duck walk. We're gonna have one knee on the floor, one foot out in front, and almost imagine our knee is trimming the carpet as we're coming forwards. So if I'm here like this, I'm gonna trim the floor as I come forwards, and let's see if we can manage that. If you need to keep your hands in front for balance, that's fine. If you really want to challenge yourself, you can go hands behind your head. And if you're feeling super advanced, then you can have your hands above you walking forwards. So just give that a little bit of a play in whatever space that you're currently working in. So as soon as we start to add different directions, 
your brain's gonna be working a lot harder, your body's gonna be working a lot harder too. Now we're gonna try using our monkey to where we're landing one, two, three, four, but we're gonna play about with the speed. So what I want you to imagine is if you've got a TV remote and somebody presses fast forward, it's gonna move a bit more quickly. If someone says, if you put it in rewind, we're gonna move backwards. And if someone says stop, you're gonna pause in the position you're in. So we've got fast forward, moving faster, rewind, moving backwards, and pause, which is just gonna be stop. So we just start off at whatever pace feels comfortable to you, just getting used to the movements. We're not doing anything too drastic. So just moving about, and then if I said fast forward, how are we gonna move then? So fast forward, moving as fast as you can in whatever space you've got. And pause. So whatever position you're in, you need to be still as you possibly can. And just relax there. So sit down, take a bit of a breather. So we're just gonna rock side to side before we get ready to hit fast forward. So just play about with that position. Maybe we're dropping our knees in. Maybe we're coming up onto our toes. Maybe we've just got our hands inside our knees and we're sweeping the floor in front of us. Okay, fast forward. So we're moving as quickly as we can. Still trying to land one hand and then the other and rewind. So this time I'm going backwards. So I'm landing one, two, three, four. And because I'm still going backwards and still in rewind mode, I'm gonna make sure I'm turning round in order to keep staying backwards. Okay, and pause to whatever position you're in. Hold it, three, two, one, and have a rest there. Next thing we're gonna do is our horse walk. So our horse walk, all we're doing is like we're doing a really big exaggerated step to the side. We're gonna slide across and then we're gonna bring the feet together. Now, if that's difficult, what I want you to do is stay higher up. So if I find it difficult, I stay higher up and bring the feet across. If I find that really easy, I can step across, stay nice and low, as low as I possibly can to the floor, and then I can slide across. So the higher, easier, lower, harder. Let's give that a bash. So I'm gonna reach my foot out as far as I can. If I find it easy, I'm gonna be low to the floor before I sweep across. So step out to the other side and sweep. Step out to the other side and sweep. Can I go backwards? And if I'm trying to go backwards, I'm gonna see how far I can reach my leg out before I slide across. And play about with your foot position as well. Can I slide across? Okay, now what we're gonna do is you're gonna test your balance. So when you slide across, or even when you've got two feet on the floor, I'm gonna shout freeze. When I shout freeze, Whatever position you're in, you need to hold it there. So you need to be as still as you can until I say go. So, trying our horse walk again, and freeze. So if you've got, let's just work with whatever position we end up balancing, and go. And freeze, so if you picked one foot up, you've gotta stay with that one foot in the air. Two, one, and go. And freeze. Okay, have a rest there. Next thing we're gonna do is something called a dinosaur walk. So we are gonna start, similar to our duck walk, we're gonna have our feet or our heels off the floor. From this position, I just want you to walk forwards, keeping those heels off the floor. So rather than our duck walk, where we were scraping our knee against the floor, we're gonna bring feet up and then just walk forwards. If this is easy, then I want you to have your hands in the air, walking forwards. If it's difficult, keep your feet flat on the floor and see if you can move like that. So we might feel that some of our muscles are starting to feel like they're doing a little bit of work. So let's try our dinosaur walk going backwards. So feet, let's try and get as tall as we can. So if we're here, we're gonna be as tall as we can, push through that big toe, Try and come as tall as you can whilst keeping 
that foot on the floor. Okay, have a rest. If you haven't already, you need to get yourself a book, an iPad, if you're lucky enough to have one, or if you're confident enough that mum and dad will let you use it for our movement challenge coming up. Next thing we're going to try is our ninja walk. So ninja walk is like a combination between a horse walk and a duck walk. One leg is coming out straight, the other leg is doing a really big step over or a big swooping motion. So this is what our ninja walk looks like. So it's one leg comes forward, one leg's doing a nice big sweeping motion. So we're testing our balance as well as our coordination. So let's, I'm gonna walk back, we're gonna try that again. So we're gonna start off in our position like our duck walk. One leg comes forward, one leg big swooping motion. And if you're really skilled or if you wanna challenge yourself, you can try that coming backwards. Big swooping motion, don't worry if you have to have your hands on the floor to make it easier. So big swooping motion, coming out to the side, and then if we're able to, coming backwards. Next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna try and blend our frogger with the side kick. So what we're gonna do for the frogger is push the floor away and then land with one foot and just stretch one foot out to the side. So I'm gonna push the floor away, land with one foot, out to the side. So we've got a hand on the floor, and we have a foot on the floor too. So testing our balance, testing our coordination. So push from the floor, one foot out, and back underneath us. Right, you've had plenty of time to grab your book or something else for our movement challenge today. So today's movement challenge is gonna be something called a gorilla squat. I'll show you the gorilla squat first, and then I will show you the movement challenge. So a gorilla squat, big, big chest at the front. You're gonna have your hands raised up, and all you're gonna do in your gorilla squat is just keep feet flat on the floor and walking forwards. So our gorilla squat, hands up, feet flat on the floor, moving forwards. So have a go at the gorilla now in whatever space you've got, and then we will get to the movement challenge. So feet flat on the floor. If you find it difficult, you can have hands in front of you, and you can walk like this. If you find that easy, hands above. So depending on what your level is, get mum and dad involved as well. And now it's time for our movement challenge. So as always, I'm gonna present the challenge with a couple of different levels. So level number one, all you've got to do is hold the book or whatever you have got access to out in front of you. And all you've got to do for challenge or the level one is just walk with this book in front of you. Okay, so that's level one. Can we walk forwards? Can we maybe chuck in some backwards movement as well with the book in front of us? Level number two is can we walk with this book held above our head? So I'll show you it from the side and then I'll show you it from the front. So this is level two, book goes above our head, we're holding onto it, can we walk in this position? So that's level two. Level number three is you're gonna bend your wrist back so that the book is supported on your wrist but you're not gripping it in level three. So level three is book balance or whatever you've got. Can we walk and can we keep our feet flat on the floor as we're walking? So that is level number three. That's today's Calisthenics Kids Challenge. Have a go, make sure you tag Calisthenics Kids in your efforts, get mum and dad to get involved as well. Trust me, it'll be hilarious seeing them fall on the floor. That was lesson number 27 of Calisthenics Kids, and I will catch you again in the next lesson.